The gentleman from Puerto Rico is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in strong support of H.R. 1726, a bill that would award the Congressional Gold Medal to the United States Army's 65th Infantry Regiment in recognition of its pioneering military service, devotion to duty, and many acts of valor in the face of adversity. The regiment was composed largely of soldiers from the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico, and members of the unit are called the Borinqueneers, which is derived from the Taino word for Puerto Rico, meaning the land of the brave Lord. Since the term was first used over 60 years ago, coined by members of the regiment on their way to Korea, it has become synonymous with honor, courage, redemption, and pride. I want to begin by expressing my gratitude to Mr. Posey of Florida. Working with him on a bipartisan basis to move this bill forward has been a pleasure. I know that Congressman Posey, like me, feels a profound sense of responsibility to these veterans and their families. The surviving members of the regiment are in the twilight of their lives. And so we hope our colleagues in the House and in the Senate, acting on behalf of a grateful nation, will see fit to honor the Borinqueneers while these humble heroes still walk among, among us. Mr. Speaker, we are honored that the oldest living Borinqueneer, Don Leonardo Martinez, who's 96 years young, is here with us today. Of course, Congressman Posey and I are not on, on this mission alone. We're working shoulder to shoulder with any, an army of individuals and organizations from Puerto Rico and the States. These advocates have been inspired by the legacy of the regiment and are mindful of its special contribution to the tapestry of American life. Their campaign on behalf of the Borinqueneers has been exceptional. I want to publicly thank each and every one of them because they are the heart and soul of this movement. I must highlight, in particular, the tireless efforts of the Borinqueneer Congressional Gold Medal Alliance, led by National Chairman Frank Medina. To place the achievements of the regiment in context, it is important to understand that for generations, from World War I, almost a century ago, to Afghanistan today, American citizens from Puerto Rico have built and maintained a rich record of military service. If you visit any U.S. military installation, you will see men and women from Puerto Rico fighting to keep this nation safe, strong, and free. They may speak English with an accent, like I do, but they're just as devoted to this country as their fellow soldiers, sail sailors, airmen, and Marines from the States. If you need proof, there is a frame on my office wall containing photographs of service members from Puerto Rico that have fallen since 9-11 row after row of young faces, sometimes smiling and sometimes stern, usually posing in their dress uniforms against the backdrop of the American flag. In a book he wrote about Puerto Rico, former Attorney General Dick Thurnberg observed that historically, Puerto Rico has ranked alongside the top five states in terms of per capita military service. In the foreword to that book, former President George H.W. Bush noted, noted Quote, this patriotic service and sacrifice of Americans from Puerto Rico touched me all the more deeply for the very fact that they have served with such devotion, even while denied a vote for the President and members of Congress who determine when, where, and how they're asked to defend our freedoms. No unit better epitomizes Puerto Rico's distinguished tradition of military service than the 65th Infantry Regiment, which was const constituted just after World War I, participated in honorable, albeit limited fashion during World War II, and came into its own during the Korean War, earning admiration for its outstanding combat performance. Like society more generally, the U.S. military in the 1950s was different than it is today, and attitudes towards ethnic minorities could be harsh. The men of the regiment not only had to fight the enemy on the battlefield, which they did with bravery and skill, but they also had to overcome negative stereotypes held by some of their commanders and comrades. For example, 
then Col Colonel William Harris, who commanded the regiment during the early stages of the Korean War, later recalled that he had been reluctant to assume command of the unit because of prejudice within the military, but that his experience eventually led him to regard the Borinkineers, quote, the best damned soldiers that I had ever seen, end quote. Such sentiments would be expressed by many others who witnessed the regiment in action, including General Douglas MacArthur, who wrote the, fo the following in 1951, quote, the Puerto Ricans forming the ranks of the gallant 65th Infantry on the battlefields of Korea give daily testament to their invincible loyalty to the United States. They are writing a brilliant record of achievement in battle, and I'm proud indeed to have them in this command. I wish that we might have many more like them." End quote. The experience of the Borinkineers during the Korean War was perhaps best encapsulated in September 2000 at a ceremony held at Na Arlington National Cemetery in honor of the regiment by Secretary of the Army Luis Calderas, who observed that the Borinkineers fought with rare courage even as they endured mis misfortune and injustice. The Borinkineers earned many unit-level awards for their service in Korea, including two presidential unit citations. Soldiers in the regiment earned many individual awards, including nine distinguished service crosses, about 250 silver stars, over 600 bronze stars, and more than 2,700 purple hearts. In March of this year, President Obama awarded the Medal of Honor, the military's highest individual award for bravery, to four deceased American soldiers from Puerto Rico, including Master Sergeant Juan Negron, who became the first Borinquineer to be accorded this honor. Moreover, in recent years, the achievements of the regiment have been recognized in many ways. A multitude of state legislators, le legislatures have approved resolutions in their honor, while numerous parks, streets, and monuments bear the regiment's name. I hope Congress will pay tribute to the Borinquineers by conferring upon them the Congressional Gold Medal. I urge my colleagues to support this bill. I, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from Puerto Rico yields. The gentleman from Massachusetts reserves. The gentleman, the chair recognizes the gentleman from Michigan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now yield as much time as you may consume to the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Posey, sponsor of this great legislation. Gentleman from Florida is recognized. I, I thank the gentleman from Michigan for yielding, and, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm pleased to be joined here today by my colleague, uh, Resident Commissioner Pierre Lucy, who you've just heard from in support of our bill, uh, H.R. 1726, to award the Congressional Gold Medal to Puerto Rico's 65th Infantry Regiment, known as the Borkaneers. During the darkest days of the Korean War, the Borkaneers, an ethnically segregated unit, served with singular distinction during a multitude of major and minor combat engagements. During the now famous Battle of Chosin Reservoir, the regiment fought alongside the 1st Marine Division, covering them through what is recognized as one of the greatest strategic withdrawals in military history. The regiment was known for its fierceness in the face of the enemy and demonstrated their exceptional courage by launching the last recorded battalion-sized bayonet charge in U.S. military history. For its service, the regiment was singled out for special recognition by General Douglas MacArthur, who declared, I am proud indeed to have them in this command. I wish that we might have many more like them. Last month, Borkaneer Master Sergeant Juan de Groen was awarded the Medal of Honor, our nation's highest military honor for heroic actions above and beyond the call of duty. Master Sergeant's actions reflected the fighting spirit, sense of duty, and dedication of the entire regiment. The Borkaneers are part of a proud tradition of distinguished American soldiers that include the Tuskegee Airmen, the Monford Point Marines, Navajo Code Talkers, 
and the Japanese American Nisei regiments, all of whom have already received the Congressional Gold Medal. I'd also like to recognize the grassroots efforts of the Borkaneer Congressional Gold Medal Alliance and their national chair, Frank Medina. For many of their members, this bill was the first time ever contacting a member of Congress. Congratulations. We would not be here today if it were not for the tireless efforts of literally hundreds of people in the Borkaneer community. I'd also like to thank Rob Medina of my Florida office, who first brought this issue to my attention, and Robert Carter, my legislative counsel, who has advanced this legislation as a member of my staff. I rise in full support of the Borkaneers and urge all of my colleagues to join us to ensure that these American soldiers are recognized for their exceptional, their courageous, and their selfless service to our nation. And I call upon the Senate to take prompt action to pass this bill and allow us to declare mission accomplished. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back.